Hi, I'm Paige Sully. I'm with uh, Wallowa County Search and Rescue. I've been with Wallowa County Search and Rescue for about 17 years now. And I'm going to talk with you about uh, just orientation to search and rescue. Firstly, I want to thank you for joining Search and Rescue and sitting through this new member training. I know it's, um, it's, it's a lot to ask and this is a, a thankless job. Uh, it's a lot of fun, but sometimes it's uh, uh, a lot of work. Uh, it can be uh, uh, unpleasant, uncomfortable, and, uh, uh, but it really benefits your, your community and uh, uh, the, the folks that you assist will really appreciate uh, your help. Okay, like everything else, learning about search and rescue is a process. Uh, you'll start out thinking you don't know anything, then all of a sudden you'll think you know everything, and at some point you'll get into, into the middle of that. I'm always kind of shifting between it makes sense to, oh man, I thought I knew it and now I don't, uh, especially because stuff is always changing. We're always uh, Im improving equipment, improving techniques, uh, impro improving our, our training. <clears throat> so, by law, search and rescue is a requirement of your county sheriff. Uh, they are required to have search and rescue operations in the county. They uh, and, and all of us are accountable to the sheriff for our search and rescue activities. The uh, the state has a the office of OEM is the office of emergency management. They have a SAR coordinator that we work with. Uh, to coordinate SAR requests, especially if we have to rely on mutual aid, go and assist other counties, or if we need uh, resources from the state, especially if we need aircraft, helicopter, or planes, uh, we'll coordinate with uh, the SAR coordinator at the Oregon uh, Emergency Management Office, and then the, the state is responsible for coordinating searches for missing aircraft. They may contact us in the counties at the local levels and, and request assistance, but they're going to take the lead on any searches for aircraft. Search and rescue in the state of Oregon is broken down to in five regions by county. We are region one. We're 10 counties, Wallowa, Union, Umatilla, Morrow, Gillum, Wheeler, Grant, Baker, Malheur, and Harney. And as you can see, that's a lo large area. Uh, but uh, for the most part, we're, we're small jurisdictions population-wise, and so we do a lot of what's referred to as mu mutual aid, meaning we just work with each other in, in our regions, uh, our neighboring counties. We train together, and uh, it wor works r really well. Occasionally, there'll be a statewide uh, uh, call for, for searchers for a, a large search, and you may go to another county. You may even respond into, into Idaho or Washington. But for the most part, you're going to be in your county and in your surrounding counties. <clears throat> the Oregon State Sheriff's Association uh, plays a, a primary role in search and rescue activities. That's, that's the, sh the sheriff's organizations. And what the sheriffs do is they periodically get together as an organization and review search and rescue certification standards, which are the standards by which you, you will be getting instruction uh, for new member training. And that's so that you can qualify uh, as a state certified search and rescue member. Uh, the Sheriff's Association funds uh, training budgets. They provide search management courses and disseminate administrative information. A lot of times uh, the Sheriff's Office will be your, your primary uh, uh, resource for uh, me media contacts in particular or contact with other agencies. Uh, either federal authorities or state authorities. <clears throat> At the county level, the sheriff will typically have someone they de designate as your, their SAR coordinator. That's the liaison between the sheriff 
and your search and rescue organization. Um, it, within your organization, you will have an incident commander. That's uh, basically your, your search manager. That's the individual that's going to get the initial call for a response, make a determination as to whether it's appropriate for uh, uh, SAR, SAR, act, SAR responders, and uh, if so, what type of resources we need, what type of resources they may ask for, and how the search will, or rescue will be managed. Um, in some areas, third-party organizations assist the Sheriff's Office with search and rescue activities. It's primarily uh, in the uh, Mount Hood, Hood River, Clackamas County area where they have uh, access to groups that are, have very high levels of mountaineering and alpine rescue skills. Um, occasionally we'll work with uh, some of our, our, our backcountry snowmobile groups or um, other, other third party groups that just have resources and capabilities that, that we don't necessarily have and that they're willing to, to help us with. Within your organization, your county search and rescue, you have basically two, two levels of activity that are going on. You have your mission management, which is your actual responses, your field responses, either for searches or for rescues or for related activities. And that's where your incident commander is going to become involved, operations. That's your actual job, what, what you will be, be doing as a search and rescue member. On the flip side, there is business management. Search and rescue, your search and rescue organization is a, a business. Most of us are, um, many of us are corporations, we're nonprofits, and we have to have some business management activities going on in terms of managing your funding, how you will expend your funds, buying and disposing of search and rescue equipment, vehicles, other resources, arranging for, for, for training, and uh, making decisions on members joining uh, and uh, scheduling your meetings getting your, uh, your, your financial records in order and, and so on. Your mission management, as I talked about, is typically the, what is involved in an actual field response. Uh, in Malawa County, we don't deploy without uh, an actual uh, approval from the sheriff. If a call comes in, our dispatch center contacts the sheriff or the sheriff's designee and he or she will authorize SAR to, to respond in a given situation. Same thing when we get a call for mutual aid. If we're asked to respond to another county, we'll make sure the sheriff is aware of that and uh, approves us to respond. <clears throat> the SAR coordinator uh, oftentimes will work in that in-between area in terms of we've gotten approval from the sheriff, now we need to make decisions on uh, what kind of response we're going to have, what kind of incident command personnel we, we may need, and uh, we'll, we'll make those decisions and see to it that an incident commander gets appointed to start the actual planning and decision making on how the field response is going gonna, is gonna to play out. Mission managers uh, are the also known as incident commanders. These are the folks that make the, the the decisions in the command center as to what personnel will go out, what resources will go out, uh, plans for additional resources that we may need, and decision making with regard to uh, what activities will take place in the field. Mission management is conducted using incident command system. You will learn that uh, not only through your, in, your class in incident command systems, which you'll be, you'll be getting uh, in your new member training, but also in your completion of the incident command system courses that are required for you to obtain your basic state OSSA certification. 
The state sets minimum training requirements for a number of reasons. Uh, part of it is so that when we respond to other, other counties or with other agencies, we are all on the same page in terms of the phrases that we use, the uh, expectations of training for various members, and uh, the, the, the use of, of, of all of our, our resources. Uh, also helps in keeping down different agencies using different jargon so that we're not, uh, we're not having issues with miscommunication because a, a, a term means one thing to one agency and something to another agency. Uh, the state sets minimum training requirements because it's important for the sheriffs to know that their field personnel have a, a, a specific level of, of training and that they can rely on that when they're deploying search and rescue members. Um, it also, of course, assists when it comes to when there's a, a breakdown and there's concerns about li liability and responsibility for something that, that, that may, may go wrong. Um, you always hope that doesn't happen, but your ability to, to be able to fall back on, on your training in that situation is, is really helpful. Within the state standards of certification, training standards, every agency designs their own training plan. Uh, the, oftentimes the sheriff is involved in that in approving the, your training plan but um, different counties have different needs in terms of uh, the resources that and the, the skill set of their, their responders. And this way each county can, can establish a training plan that works be best for their personnel and their, uh, their geographic realities. Your process of certification, once you've gotten your state certification, which is your 30 hours of training, uh, your incident command system certification courses, your first aid and your CPR card, uh, as well as demonstrating some field skills, the, you will be required to maintain 30 hours of training a year. Uh, what that training is may, may vary, uh, again, based on the needs of your agency, the needs of your community, um, also as well as the needs of your, your personnel. You may have personnel, a lot of uh, personnel that have an interest in ropes training or an interest in winter training, and so you may have uh, more training in those. And then of course there's general training that's always helpful, patient packaging, land navigation, uh, use of communication devices, and so on. Most search and rescue organizations have a training officer that keeps track of your hours, uh, make sure that you have your, your, uh, your 30 hours, and addresses issues if, you have, if you're a member that maybe hasn't gotten your 30 hours of, tra of training that year in terms of ensuring that uh, that situation is remedied. <clears throat> We'll be holding uh, a new member training academy. Uh, it's hoped that virtually everybody that needs their new training, their new member training, will be able to make as many classes as possible. If not, I encourage you to work with your training officer to uh, schedule training to, to uh, get the classes that you need in order to qualify uh, to obtain your, your state certification. Personal gear. We, you, we will have a training uh, module on uh, personal equipment and your, your ready pack. Every member in the field is responsible to have appropriate clothing. Uh, check with your agency to make sure that if they have specific clothing requirements, either a vest, a jacket, some insignia, that they require you to wear in the field, that you have that and that you wear that. Um, obviously, you wanna wear proper clothing for the, seal, for the season, keeping in mind that you may be out for two hours, you may be out for 20, 22 hours. Um, and that's uh, part of the reason you carry your 24-hour your pack 
it's designed to have the equipment that you need to be flexible to address changes in weather, terrain, uh, scope of your search, and the length of time that you may, may be in the field. Um, okay, SAR activities, missions, wilderness and urban. Um, I don't know about the rest of you folks. In Wallowa County, we don't do a lot of urban searches. We're starting to do a few more. Um, primarily, they are searches for vulnerable adults that may have walked away from uh, either a group home or a um, residential care facility and didn't, didn't return. That, and occasionally we'll get a search, an urban search for a, a lost child. But for the most part, we're in the, in the back country. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, in addition to doing searches and rescues in the back country, we as search and rescue members may be called upon to assist in a number of different situations based on the, what, what your sh sheriff may need and, and his expectations for his search and rescue unit or her search and rescue unit. In Malawa County, I know that we have assisted in um, uh, sandbagging when we've had problems with, with flooding in the community. I know in Union County during COVID, search and rescue members assisted uh, the, the sheriff in the, in the county in, uh, in managing some of the, the community-based COVID responses. Um, oftentimes, we will help with road close, if there's the need to close road close roads, um, do fire or flooding evacuation notices, search and rescue members may be called upon to assist with those. Uh, search and rescue, as a search and rescue member, you may be asked to be involved in non-emergency, uh, non-incident response types of activities. These run the gamut from uh, participating in parades which is, uh, your community likes to see that, that's it. Your community members will be uh, very supportive of, of you as search and rescue. And uh, participating in these activities is very beneficial. They, they see you, they see your, your skills, they see the, the equipment that you use, and it helps them better understand what you do as search and rescue members. Um, you may be asked to assist in helping at community events in terms of teaching classes, either uh, safety in the wilderness classes or navigation classes, patient packaging, medical, and so on. This is one of those classes that I talked about, Lost in the Woods. It's a search and rescue class involving, uh, looks like school kids. And uh, during these classes, they're taught about how to avoid getting lost and what to do if they are lost um, and how to make themselves more likely to be located either by SAR members or perhaps even even canine. That. Um, as a SAR member, you may be involved in fundraising activities. Uh, like most groups, there's never enough money, money to go around and oftentimes Search and rescue needs uh, additional funding beyond what your sheriff may be able to provide for you. And that fundraising takes a, a number of different uh, uh, scopes. It can be community events such as a golf event. Um, you can write, do grant, grant funding, write grants. Uh, a couple of the counties I know have uh, serve hamburgers at the rodeos or perhaps the, the fair and other, those kinds of other activities that will help you fund uh, training and equipment for your organization. Most SAR units have some uh, of these uh, re resources. The lucky ones will have all. all, all. Uh, again, some of this is gonna be based on the needs of your community. If you're in a community that doesn't have a lot of snow, doesn't have a lot of alpine uh, types of activity, you may not have snowmobiles or tra tracked equipment. 
Uh, you may not have the need for a ropes rescue gear. Pretty much, you're always going to have communications equipment. You're going to have rescue sleds. You may have ATVs and UTVs. Uh, and sometimes you may be using personally owned equ equipment as, as well if uh, the scope of your search exceeds the equipment amount of equipment that you have available to you. Through uh, the Oregon Emergency Management Office and your, your, uh, the state coordinator, the sheriff has the ability to request a, a wide variety of resources. And that's primarily if the scope of your search or your rescue exceeds uh, your personnel or your equipment resources. Uh, you can contact the state if you need uh, mutual aid, you need personnel from other agencies outside Re Region 1. Uh, you would contact the state if you needed uh, hoist rescue, helicopter, uh, or other air, air assets. Here in at least Northeast Oregon, we, we tend to rely on life flight, life flight as our primary contact when we need to evaluate, evacuate uh, inter, injured individuals in the, in the field if a landing zone is present or near, nearby. You may also work with the Air National Guard or the Forest Service uh, with, with regard to uh, uh, helicopter resources. Some of the SAR, SAR resources available here in Union County, snowmobiles, uh, the fire department. That's actually Willow County Swiftwater Rescue Team responding here in Union County, which we did uh, a couple, three years ago for a missing individual in the Grand Ronde River. I believe this is probably the dive team. Baker County has a, has a dive team uh, available. Some equipment isn't as cool as others, that's, that's for sure. But if you need this and you don't have it, you'll be really sorry you don't. Um, anatomy of a SAR incident. Okay. Typically, uh, in, in your county, and you're, we're dispatched by 911. A call comes into 911 either from a reporting party, a, a individual, with knowledge of, of a missing or injured subject in the field, or a call from a an, uh, clearinghouse that received a, a, a response on a personal locator beacon like a spot unit or an in reach device that there's somebody in danger. Uh, when dispatch comes in, the call comes into dispatch, they'll then follow your county protocols for getting an incident commander on the, in play. Uh, once your incident commander is, or your SAR coordinator is on board, they then will conduct an, in, an initial investigation. Uh, not every call for SAR assistance results in personnel going in, into the field. In fact, there's quite a lot that don't that the uh, incident commander or uh, the sheriff's office or combination can often, res oftentimes resolve uh, a response without requesting personnel and putting them in the field, either by being able to contact the individual, the missing individual, uh, directly by phone or on in-reach and addressing their issue, helping them to identify uh, a route to re return to uh, re return to where they uh, they know where their their whereabouts are. Uh, the IC may contact a, another agency that's better able to assist. Occasionally in Wallowa County, we'll have incidents that are far enough in the north part of our county that it's actually faster for a response from Washington state to uh, respond to the call then for Wallowa County r responders. And so we may contact uh, a, a county in Washington and ask them if they're available to, to field the response, at least initially. Uh, so, uh, or occasionally they'll dispatch life flight 
and they'll be able to make contact with the subject and extract them without search and rescue personnel actually needing to respond to the field. If a call is for a, a back county, count back country rescue, uh, SAR resources may be paged to deploy to the field immediately. That's going to depend upon your, your agency as to whether they'll, they'll direct, you'll be de deployed directly from your home to the field or whether you'll be asked to come to a staging area, uh, especially if you need to pick up equipment or if um, you need to uh, wait for ad additional personnel. Rescues often are, have more, are more time sensitive. Um, searches less so, uh, except in the situation of where you may have a, a very vulnerable subject and the, it, the situation is such that they're at risk, either very inclement weather, uh, very, uh, the geography of the area is very rough and, and dangerous, in which case a, a search may have a higher, uh, develop a, a higher level of urgency. So ropes rescue team, pa patient packaging uh, subject for extraction. This is a, looks like a uh, aircraft, down aircraft. Uh, and something my personal favorite called the stranded stranded motorist in the backcountry stuck in the snow or the mud or occasionally they're they're lost we get a, a lot of those these calls uh, especially if the weather changes pretty drastically or they are the the folks are, are newcomers to the communities and they just don't have a, a good understanding of how quickly the, our backcountry roads can can turn uh, turn messy. This looks to be a uh, re rescue subjects packaged for uh, perhaps waiting for extraction. This may also be a, a responder getting a little bit of, get a little bit of sleep. This is looks like another looks like this looks like the Swiftwater rescue call I talked about earlier. Uh, you can see right there, this is a litter on a, a wheel called a mule or a, a blue wheel. It's for uh, extracting individuals from the backcountry uh, and when you can't get an, a landing zone in or the subject isn't in, is their injuries are minor enough that it doesn't warrant the use of air resources to extract them. You will become very familiar with other organizations even in your, your own, ca own county. Uh, for example, this l use of this litter, it is much preferable to actually carrying a litter out, but it's still a lot of work. Uh, the trails get narrow, they get um, they become very rough and it requires a lot of personnel to bring somebody out any d kind of a distance on a litter like that. We have, we've relied on uh, our local fire, fire department to help us with this, uh, forest service employees, especially firefighters, uh, uh, wildland firefighters that are available that will help us. They've helped us with ropes rescue. Uh, you'll become uh, familiar with uh, your other other agencies in, in your community that will give you provide you a helping hand when you just don't have enough personnel resources. While you're in the field, the IC is continuing to work, identifying the next act, next search or rescue activities, monitoring personnel in the field, making sure that resources are available and making decisions about what's going to happen in the next operational period. Before you go in the field, you're going to be the briefed. Uh, you're going to, you're not, probably not going to get the overview of the entire ev event because you don't need to know it. You just need to know 
what your job is, what, uh, what you may be looking for, and uh, what resources you're, you're, going to, you're going to need. And um, making sure as a team everyone understands their, their role and their expectations and has the ability to ask any questions and make sure you get the information that you need to feel comfortable responding. Once the subject's located, they're uh, extracted either by you uh, or by air, air extraction. In Malawa County, we oftentimes, oftentimes use stock uh, for extraction. If we get somebody that is uh, not injured in a, in a manner that is life-threatening or of a severity that a uh, aircraft extraction is necessary, but they can't ambulate out under their own power. They have a sprained ankle or a twisted knee, in which case uh, it's, uh, they, can, they oftentimes ride, and that's, that's very helpful for extraction. It avoids us having to bring them out on, on the litter, and uh, that's a, a resource that we utilize quite often. Search and Rescue doesn't extract vehicles. Uh, or snowmobiles or UTVs. Uh, we go get the folks, we bring them back in so they're safe, and then they can make arrangements for removal of their equipment. Okay, that's a uh, quick sort orientation to search and rescue, and uh, most of this will be covered in, in more depth in uh, uh, other tra training mo modules. Thanks very much.